Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken. We're back in Chapter 11, which is all about 3D geometry. In Section 3, we're learning about the volume of pyramids and cones. We're going to be learning some new formulas, so let's get started with the warm-up. You have three questions to work on, and you're going to turn the video off to work on those, and you're going to turn the video back on when you are ready to check your answers. See you back in a minute. All of these questions were fairly straightforward, although some were a little bit more involved than others. If you have any questions about the volume of any of these figures, go back to the appropriate section in our notes. Or bring your questions to class. The volume of a pyramid is related to the volume of a prism with the same base and height. We can see the graphic that we've got here. We started out with a cube, which is a square prism, and we basically pulled it apart along those dotted lines, creating three square-based pyramids of equal volume. So that's going to actually inform how we calculate the volume of a pyramid, and we can see that the volume of a pyramid can be calculated using this formula, which is one-third area of the base times the height. So that's pretty easy because we've been using for a prism and a cylinder V equals uppercase B times H. Now we're just going to multiply that by one-third for the pyramid. Also, you'll see as we move forward for a cone. We're going to use that same formula. Okay, so let's take a look at example one. In example one, we're finding the volume of pyramids, and A says we have a rectangular pyramid with length 11 meters, width 18 meters, and height 23 meters. We're going to assume that that means the perpendicular height. We do not need to draw a diagram for this, but it sometimes can be helpful for us to see, so I'm going to draw a diagram. Then we're going to write down our formula, and then of course we're going to show substitution. So one-third times the base of our pyramid, which is a rectangle, so that's a length times width, and then times the height. So one-third, let's go ahead and actually substitute in now, 11 meters times 18 meters, and then times the height, which is 23 meters. Notice that that is the perpendicular height that we've drawn. Okay, so we're going to have, when we plug it in, our volume of 1,518 cubic meters. Let's take a look at question B now. Again, we're working with a pyramid. This time it's not a rectangular pyramid. It's going to be a square pyramid. And we have a base edge length 9 centimeters and a height 14 centimeters. Again, I'm going to draw a diagram. Next comes our formula, V equals one-third uppercase B times H. And we've got a square base, so that's a side squared for uppercase B. And now we can plug in our values. So we have 9 centimeters. That's going to be squared times a height of 14 centimeters. Oops, let's add that to the diagram. And all that's left is to multiply it all together. So we end up with a total volume of 378 cubic centimeters. So we had a rectangular pyramid and a square pyramid. On the next page, we've got an example of a hexagonal pyramid to work with. Let's take a look. Question C says that we have a regular hexagonal pyramid with a height equal to the apothem of the base and a side length of 12 feet. As always, we're not required to have a drawing, but sometimes it does help us out. Feel free to either draw or bring in a screenshot of something you find online. So again, we have a side length of 12 feet. Remember, this is all the sides of this hexagon base, hexagonal base. And we're going to start out with our formula, V equals one-third uppercase B times H. We know that uppercase B this time is going to be our apothem formula, one-half times the apothem times the perimeter, and then, of course, back to our H from our volume formula. So let's see what we've got. When we have a hexagon, we know that our central angle is 60 degrees. And when we cut that central angle in half, we're going to have a 30-60-90 triangle with a short side length of 6 feet and a long leg of 6 root 3 feet. Okay, 
We've got the length of the apothem, now we just need the perimeter. We know that there are six sides, and each of these sides is 12 feet, so the perimeter is equal to 72 feet. Back to our formula, so one-third times one-half times the length of the apothem, which is 6 root 3 feet, times the length of the perimeter, 72 feet, and now we need the height of the pyramid. It told us in the question that the height was equal to the apothem, so that means we've got another root 3 in there, 6 root 3. And that's also in feet. So when we multiply everything together, we're going to have volume is equal to 1,296 cubic feet. You'll notice that every time I do one of these questions, I am putting in the units and multiplying the units across. This is a great way to avoid errors in units. Now let's take a look at example two. In example two, we want to find the volume of an art gallery, and the art gallery is a six-story square pyramid with base area of one-half an acre. We want to estimate the volume in cubic yards and cubic feet, and we've got a couple of conversion factors thrown in to help us out. From the description, it made me think of the Louvre Museum in France, so that's the image I'm going to pull in for this question. The conversion factors that have been given to us are one acre equals 4,840 square yards, and one story is equal to approximately 10 feet. We also, because we're going to find it in cubic yards and cubic feet, we may want to write down a couple more conversion factors, such as one yard equals three feet, and if one yard equals three feet, then one square yard is going to equal three feet squared or nine square feet. Okay, what about when we're finding volume? Then we need to go a little bit further and say one cubic yard is equal to three feet cubed or 27 cubic feet. This is gonna help us out in our conversion. Next, let's write down our formula. We know that V is equal to one third the area of the base times the height of the pyramid. So the area of the base is one half acre. We were given that in the question. And one half acre is 4,840 square yards. Okay, so that means that the area of our base is 2,420 square yards. So that's what we're gonna plug in. We also need H, and H is given to us as six stories, and one story is about 10 feet. Now, we're going to work in yards and we're going to work in feet, but we need to work in the same units at the same time to be able to find our volume and have consistent units. So what that means is we need to convert the 10 feet into yards, and we know 3 feet go into 1 yard, so this is going to give us an H of 20 yards. Okay, now we're ready to go back to our volume formula. V is equal to one-third, our base is 2,420 square yards, and our height is 20 yards, which is going to give us a volume of 16,133 cubic yards. Now we could start all over from the very beginning and convert everything into feet and then do the multiplication in feet, but Another choice is to say we know that we have 16,133 cubic yards, so we need to multiply by a conversion factor that will get rid of cubic yards. And we did that in this conversion factor, so we know that 27 cubic feet is equal to one cubic yard. And so we're able to come up with a volume in feet 
just through that simple multiplication by a conversion factor. This is very important, and although students often don't want to work with conversion factors, thinking that it's too complicated and too hard, it's really great for science, and it makes sure that you avoid errors with any of your units. So get in the habit of it. We've done some great work with the pyramids. Now let's take a look at some cones. Volume of cones is also given as one-third uppercase B, which is the base area, times height, the perpendicular height. And when we're working with a cone, we know that the base is circular, so we're going to use V equals one-third pi R squared times H as our formula. But remember, it starts with one-third uppercase B, which is the base area, times the perpendicular height. All right, now that we've got that, let's take a look at example three. We want to find the volume of each cone, giving our answers both in terms of pi and rounded to the nearest tenth. To start with, in question A, we have a cone with radius 7 centimeters and a height of 15 centimeters. So we know that the volume of a cone is one-third uppercase B times H, and we know that uppercase B is pi r squared, and we know that in this case, our radius is 7 centimeters, and our height is 15 centimeters. So when we multiply through, we're going to have v equals 245 pi cubic centimeters. This is our answer in terms of pi. And then if we multiply pi through, we're going to have rounded to one decimal place, 769.7 cubic centimeters. Question B is a little bit different because it says we have a cone with base circumference 25 pi inches, so they gave us the circumference of the base, and we have a height two inches more than twice the radius. The one thing they didn't give us was R, the radius. And we're gonna find the radius by working backwards from the circumference. Circumference is, in this example, 25 pi inches, but we know it's 2 pi r, and we can divide out the pi's. So that means we're going to have 25 inches is equal to 2 r, and if we divide both sides by 2, that means that r is equal to 12.5 inches. Now, it said that the height is two inches more than twice the radius. So height is two inches more than twice the radius, which was 25 inches. So our height is 27 inches. This is the height of our cone. Going back to our formula, we're gonna have V is equal to one-third pi R, which we now know is 12.5 inches squared times h, which we now know is 27 inches. And remember, we're going to give our answer both in terms of pi and multiplied through. So in terms of pi, we're going to have a volume of 1,406.3 pi cubic inches, and we can also write that as 4,417.9 cubic inches. So, so far we've seen two kinds of cone questions, one that is very straightforward, one that we needed to work backwards to find R, and in question C we have yet another type. In question C we've got the radius given to us 16 centimeters and we've got the slant height, but we do not have the perpendicular height, so we need to solve for that. Luckily, we very quickly realize that what we've got here is a right triangle. And that means that we can find the height h, which is that perpendicular height, using the Pythagorean theorem. So we set it up and then solve for h. And we get a perpendicular height of 30 centimeters. Back to, and we're, we're showing good habits here because we're starting out with our formula, one-third base area times height. And that base area is pi r squared and we're going to substitute in. We know that our radius is 16 centimeters, which is going to be squared, and our height is 30 centimeters. 
when we multiply this through, remember we're writing it both ways, we get 2,560 pi cubic centimeters, and we also get 8,042.5 cubic centimeters. In example four, we want to see what happens when we change dimensions. And in this case, we have a cone. You can see that we've got the perpendicular height and we've got the diameter, which of course we'll cut in half to get the radius. But in this case, both the diameter and the height of the cone are going to be divided by three. And we want to know what's going to happen to the volume. On a question like this one, sometimes what we're tempted to do is to find both volumes and then figure out what the effect was. But there's an easier way. Let's start out by writing down our formula for the volume of a cone. Volume is equal to one-third circular area base times the height. We know that that circular area base is going to be pi r squared times the perpendicular height. And this is what we would plug into if we were trying to find the volume of the cone that we have. But what is going to happen is both the radius and the height are going to be divided by 3, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1 third. Let's see what that looks like. The radius is multiplied by 1 third. The height is multiplied by 1 third. What's going to happen when we square the 1 third r? We can see that our volume formula looks a little bit different now. And if we gather together what the normal volume formula is for a cone, 1 third pi r squared, which is this, this, and this, oops, times h, there we go, times h, then we see what's left over is 1 ninth multiplied by 1 third. And this is what indicates the change in the volume is. So 1 ninth times 1 third is 1 27th. And we're going to write our answer actually in words so that we describe what the change in volume is. If the diameter and the height of a cone are divided by 3, then the volume of the new cone will be 1 27th of the volume of the original cone. If we were multiplying by a number instead of dividing by a number, then instead of it being 1 27th, for instance, if the diameter and the height were multiplied by 3, then it would be 27 times as large as the original. All right, let's take a look at example number five now. You may remember this type of question from earlier sections where we were trying to find the volume of composite three-dimensional figures. We see that in this figure, we've actually got three figures kind of all rolled into one. We've got a cone on top. I'm going to call that figure number one. And then a cylinder. I'll call that figure number two. And then figure number three is another cone at the bottom. We also see that we've been given some dimensions. The cylinder is 35 centimeters tall. The radius of all three objects is 21 centimeters. And we see that the bottom cone is 40 centimeters tall. But we have a combined length of 70 centimeters for figures one and two, the cone and the cylinder which means, knowing that the cylinder is 35 centimeters tall, that the top cone, number one, is also 35 centimeters tall. Okay, we've analyzed our figure, and now we are ready to set up our equation. It's going to look like V sub total. I'm using a subscript of total to indicate that it's our combined volume, is the combination or the sum of volumes 1, 2, and 3, which are indicative of the way that I numbered our different figures. So for volume 1, which is the cone on the top, it's 1 third pi r squared h. For volume 2, our cylinder, it's pi r squared h, no 1 third because it's a cylinder. And for the bottom cone, we've got 1 third pi r squared h. Next, let's plug in some numbers. Okay, got a little tight there, but we fit it all in. When we multiply it all together, remember that we can write it both in terms of pi and round it to the nearest tenth, which reminds me, we've got a typo here that should say round to the nearest tenth. Anyhow, so we're going to write it both ways. When we multiply it all through, we have 26,460 pi 
cubic centimeters, and if we multiply pi through, we've got 83,126.5 cubic centimeters. That's the last example in this lesson, and now you're ready to get started on your homework. If you have any questions, bring them to class. I'll see you back in section four, four spheres.